Welcome back to already the third day of Advent of Code, where we already need to get serious as we shall be dealing with 2D grids and gear ratios. Let's get started. We have arrived at a gondola lift station, but the gondolas are not moving. Certain engine parts seem to be missing, but the elves don't know which one. Given a 2D schematic, if we add up all the part numbers, then it should be easy to work out which part is missing. An example of such a schematic is the following grid with numbers, dots, and symbols. Every number adjacent to a symbol, even diagonally, that is not a dot, is a part number. What is the sum of all part numbers in the engine schematic? If we take a look at the example given as part of the problem, then we can identify all symbols as marked by the green circles. The part numbers are all the numbers which are adjacent to these symbols, and I've marked them yellow. If you haven't given this problem a shot yet, maybe now is a good opportunity to take a stab at it. Ready? Let's take a look at the solution. We shall, of course, need to do some 2D processing of the grid. Let's use the symbols as starting points for a flood filling algorithm. Every number touched by the flood fill shall be a part number. If we take this approach, then the outline of the solution can look as follows. We will loop over the rows and columns of the grid and inspect the character at every position. If that character is not a dot and it is not a digit, then we will trigger a fluid fill via the mark part numbers function. After marking all numbers in the grid, we shall call a function to extract the part numbers and we can print the sum. Working with 2D grids works easiest for me if I convert the strings from our input to actual lists of characters. Then, for convenience, let's store the width and height in global variables as well. Lastly, is part number is a 2D array of the same size as the original grid, simply marking if a cell is a part of one of the part numbers. This will help us doing the flood fill. But before we start flood filling, let's take a look at two sub-problems that are generally critical when working with navigating 2D grids. The first is to check if a particular row column pair is in the bounds of the grid. It makes no sense to check indices outside of the bounds of the grid. The second sub-problem is to identify, for a given position, which cells are adjacent. We can use the product function from IDER tools to generate the offsets seen in the bottom right. Then for every row and column offset, we check if the adjacent cell is in bounds. If it is, then we know this is a position which we want to explore and return. Flood filling itself is something we can do with a breadth first search. It works as follows. Suppose we have found this symbol first, then we explore all neighbors that are numbers and mark them as being part of a part number. Then we keep doing this recursively or iteratively until we have touched all numbers attached to the area that was touched by the original symbol. When no more numbers are found, we can continue searching for the next symbol in our grid and we flood fill from the new starting point. One thing to note about today's input is that after analyzing it, it seems that at no point we will have part numbers touching as shown in these blue examples. So we won't have to worry about this edge case where theoretically we could flood fill into numbers that are technically not adjacent to symbols. Now for the actual algorithm, let's do it non-recursively. We create a queue in which we put the first position and we will keep track of the index of our current queue item thereby simulating first in first out behavior. Then, while i is less than the length of the queue, we know that there are still new positions to explore as part of our search. So we take the row and column from the queue at index i, and we check if the grid at this position is a digit. If it is, then it is a part number, and we mark it in the is part number grid. Then we go over the adjacent positions of the current row and column. If that is also a digit, and it is not yet marked as a part number, then we add it to the queue to expand our breadth first search. Lastly, we need to increment i to process the next item of the queue. Finally, we need to extract the part numbers from the grid. All yellow numbers are now marked as being part of some part number, but they're not combined yet. To get them, we can loop over the grid rows and columns, and if the grid at a position is a part number, then we add it to the current number. If it is not, 
meaning we encounter a dot or a symbol, then we know that the number has ended and we append it to the numbers list as an integer. It is possible that a number ends at the edge of the grid, so after processing a row, we need to check if we do not still have a number which we did not yet append to the list. And that's it. You now have all the tools needed for solving part one. For part two, we discover that the gondola is now moving, but it does so super slowly. Turns out that the missing part was not the only issue. Apparently, one of the gears in the engine is wrong as well. A gear is any star symbol that is adjacent to exactly two part numbers in the grid. The gear ratio is the result of multiplying those two numbers together. So given the same input as for part one, what is the sum of all the gear ratios in the engine schematic? Looking at the same example as for part one, we can see that there are only two green symbols which are a star and that are adjacent to two part numbers. Let's see how we can modify our code to solve part two. Let's still do the flood fill, but let's only mark when the symbol is a star and then also mark the flooded areas with unique IDs because then we can count how many part numbers are part of every flooded area. Every area with only two part numbers shall be gears. To do this, we can modify our is part number grid to a gear ID list that we initialize to zero, where zero indicates that a cell of the schematic grid is not assigned to any area. Then we set ID to one and we start numbering from there. In our loop over the grid, we only start flooding when the character is a star. After flooding, we increment our ID. At the end, we then need to collect all areas via extract possible gears, and we'll filter that down to the actual gears using the extract real gears function on those possible gears. To see how flood filling with IDs works on the example schematic, please have a look at this grid. Instead of using numbers, I marked the areas with colors, but the principle is the same. We managed to clearly identify groups, and only two of the groups have exactly two part numbers. The flood filling algorithm is still largely the same, but we need to mark cells with the global ID, which we keep incrementing outside of this function. During exploration, we of course only have to add positions to the queue that do not yet have a gear ID. Extracting the possible gears is also very similar to part one, but we put the numbers in lists, which are stored in a dict. The keys in that dict shall be the IDs. Note that we're not yet considering to remove the areas which do not have exactly two part numbers. This is a subproblem that the next function will solve. If we have the dictionary, then checking which areas are gears is as simple as checking the length of the list. Please subscribe if you like this content, because this is it already. Two more stars in the bag. Today was quite an extensive problem, so I hope you're having as much fun as I'm having. Thank you for watching, and I hope you're looking forward to tomorrow's problem.